Uh, it's just like landing properly and I'm not actually doing it. I now have one leg that's like way better than the other, but it's actually my injury side. It just moves a lot more functionally. I enjoyed taking the videos, mainly to look at them and see like each week how far you've come or like what you're doing. I had loads of comments on social media being like, oh, like I did this, like it's nice to see that like athletes go through that as well and um, is letting people know that it actually is challenging for everyone. It's it's not it's not one way for athletes and one way for 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 non athletes. Um, it's it's hard for everyone. So what happened was I think we were like five minutes into the game and we had a dominant scrum and I got up and I kind of sat back on my heels and as I stood up cross-legged, my knee got really tight and I was like, ooh, I was like, oh, if I, um, if I straighten this, I think I'm gonna tear something. And I was like, Six Nations is coming, like, don't push through it, like, be sensible. <laughs> Sarah Byrne is the one who's down and Sarah Byrne is not someone who tends to stay down. I've stood up cross-legged and um, I've just managed to clip my meniscus through the middle of it and it's kind of a motion where you squish it and twist and then it opens the knee joint up and then the middle of it flipped up and it got stuck in my knee, between my kneecap. I think when they came back and they said meniscus, I was like, oh brilliant, like that's just a little trim back in two months. But they said, no, I've really had a massive tear through the middle of it, which is the unusual part. It wasn't on the outskirts, so they couldn't just trim it down. They had to repair it and stitch it back together. Um, and I think a lot of people's reactions when I first had the surgery, they were like, no, you'll be back, it's just a meniscus. But no, it, it took me a while. <laughs> How are we? Been fine. I just have this light pocket of swelling here, which sometimes... But it looks good today, I think. That yeah, actually looks... I think the comparison for you is what's really important. That looks better than this time last week. And that's just... This is this a shark bite? That is shark bite. It's just... just having a boot. At Bristol, really fortunate because we had Kate Tyler was our head physio, um, who's worked with me for many years, so she can read me like a book <laughs> if I'm happy or sad, um, which is great to have someone there who's so compassionate and really invested in you and cares so much. I definitely felt more a part of the medical team um, at that point rather than part of the team, um, but that's just the way it is, and I think I played a lot of rugby, you pick up niggles. I think everyone will say, you, if you've played a long time, you have a lot of niggles that you don't always get the time to sort out. So for me, it was okay, well, how can I fix these niggles? So when I had to learn to walk again, it was like, well, how do I make sure I walk properly with the right gait, using the right muscles? And I enjoy learning about that and making sure I'm doing it right. So the focus came away from how much can I lift and how powerful can I be to actually how functional can I be and watching videos being like oh no I don't think that's right and videoing it again and so at the start it was very slow but I enjoyed that bit I think the hardest bit is that bit you're six to twelve weeks in that middle period where you have learned to walk again and now you're re rebuilding you're rebuilding your fitness you're rebuilding your weight you've, but you've been doing a lot of the stuff already for six to eight weeks so that's the hardest bit because you feel like you're just repeating yourself and you feel like you've got so far to go because you've still got five, four, whatever, however many months to go. It was hard at first to think, oh, I'm really gonna miss out on this Six Nations experience. Um, and I possibly, you know, possibly might not get selected again, possibly might not get picked, but then my mind flips to, well, I'm gonna do everything I can, so that's not an option. I'm very fortunate in the fact I love training. I actually in really enjoy the gym. It was nice to be able to kind of challenge myself in a gym area where you're not constantly recovering from being absolutely battered on a rugby pitch and actually you can really focus on those gains away from the pitch. It was, although it was sad and I really wished I was playing, it was nice to have different goals for a little bit in, understanding it's just for a brief time and actually when I come back it will make me a lot better.
Nemesis right now. Do you know what I also think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 France is an incredibly hard game. Um, they are extremely physical, they are tough, they um, are relentless, and there's obviously a huge rivalry there since 2018. I think that's the last time that they, they beat us. So it's a, it's a battle. It is a, a tough game they and very, very fit as well, so they just will not stop. Uh, coming in with the competition so high, I think people there pushing you every day. You can't just rely on your strength or your size. You have to work on your technique. You have to be able to lift well in the gym. You have to think of every little detail that is gonna give you that 2% because it's so competitive. It could be a tiny 1% error. And that's the difference between a start and a bench or, or an NPR. So I think it will make us better. And it's actually quite scary to see how far we can push each other because everyone's just getting better and better every day. So it gives the coaches a headache for one, but also what an amazing place to be in that you have phenomenal world-class players all across the pitch, but not just one to 15, you know, you've got one to 30 of them. So um, I think it's a luxury that we have. Um, and I think we're in a very fortunate position. Do not let the pressure of the weekend come onto us, right? We live by this now. We go after it. We can throw the ball around and we play the way we want to play. Enjoy the rest of the week. Stay confident. It's all about us. No one else. Yeah. What well girls? Very so, much girls. Rose on red! Red! Roses! As I get into your presentation, I'm going to kick off with welcoming our newest Red Rose to the family. Her journey started off at a cricket final at the age of 13, where a school friend asked her to come along to her rugby team as they needed more players. From there, she played for Telford Hornets and represented the North Midlands at divisional level. She has represented England under 18s, but most recently captained the England under 20s, which is an incredible achievement in itself. Her hard work and the way she's held herself in this squad has been incredible throughout pre-season. And she's a fantastic addition to the team. So Queen Lil, we can't wait for you to take the field tomorrow. Enjoy it and welcome to the Red Roses. Where do I begin? From Tring Rugby Club to our divisional days where we first became roomies. To under 20s where I stranded you and you had to fend for yourself. To being reunited at Stonex for our first cap in 2017. You've achieved so much since then and it's an amazing achievement to receive your 15th cap tomorrow. There's been lots of ups and downs and you've had a challenging 18 months. Not many people have the resilience and determination to keep going and get back into the white shirt like you. I'm so proud of you, and I know all your family are too. Go out there tomorrow and do your thing. We're all behind you. Just a special mention, Berna, first tournament back, well, getting back from your injury, like, just shows incredible character and resilience for the way you've come back. So awesome for you. Also, Poppy, first time coming back in England shirt, I think, in 18 months. So just go out there and enjoy it tomorrow, girls. <laughs> um, one second. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, being in the white jersey is very special. Uh, I think when you're constantly playing and you're constantly within the setup, it's never a given. It's never, well, you've been here the longest or you've, you've had the most starts, you have the most caps, you should get the shirt. It's who's the best this week, who deserves it this week. And actually then when you're in it, that's your reward. Go and enjoy it, go and celebrate it. And that's kind of how I see, see the shirt, is actually that's the bit at the end after you've done all the hard training, that's the bit you're working for. 
no point being scared about it, no point having anxiety about it. You can't control any of it. Just go and enjoy it and try your best and that's all you can do. It's every shirt is special to me, you know, yeah. <laughs>